Hello, we're back with the BBB boys. Uh, I'm Joe, and with me today is Gareth. Hello. Hello. Hello, Gareth. Have you got seagulls with you today? Probably. They're being quiet for now, but who knows? Excellent. And then Craig. Hello, Craig. Hello. And Craig today is going to talk us through the history of this snappy boy. Yeah. We were talking about how we would like to help new people kind of see that, that building isn't isn't as scary as it can seem i guess Going off the humble beginnings, right? the snappy origin story yeah i think kind of the joy of this thing has been keeping it so simple it's so easy to work on to start off i was inspired back in the uh, the late 90s by a certain robot that i, I quite like called uh, panic attack I've never um, heard you talk about it, Craig. You've never heard me talk about yeah, Panic Attack, have well, you? Tell us the story of Panic Attack. <laughs> so this was the Series 2 final where Panic Attack ended up winning. Panic Attack has always been my favourite robot. So when I came to uh, wanting to build a robot, I took inspiration from Panic Attack. This was my first sketch. Was this so a paint I, job? Yeah. Uh, MS Paint. I had recently been to my first event with a certain Jack Tweedy. Big up Tweedy. We we were talking about how we were both going to do Beetleweights. Beetleweights were super new in the UK at that time, so nobody really knew what was going on. But there was one fella who knew what was going on, and that fella's name is Harry Hills. What a pleasant fella. And this kind of is one of the most important points. Don't be afraid to ask for help. There are so many communities of, of us lot that will always help out and he helped me immensely. I went from these quite frankly terrible drawings. He helped me along the way and we ended up with this design coming along. And this is you um, doing CAD as well? Was this your first CAD? This was Harry. This is but, um, Google SketchUp then, right? Yeah, this is the old school Google SketchUp, which I still use if I'm feeling really lazy. I'm and it's the MS honest. pain of CADs, let's be honest. So. Yeah. Very easy thing to get started with, right? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I bought loads of bits on kind of on the recommendation. I had no idea what was going on. This was me kind of laying it out on the dining room table. We got the two 25 mil motors, are still fairly common. I would say use the 22 mils. But these are cheap and cheerful. And, we, and cheerful. we all started here, I think, apart from Gareth, but you know, most people yeah. started here. That blue box is a massive lipo for beta weights. This was 3S, so. 11-ish volts. Two yellow things are the two speed controllers, which go from the receiver into the motors. This green thing is the BEC, which turns the voltage down from the 11 or whatever down to 5 volts for the receiver. And the servos as well, I guess. You're down-volting for those. Yeah, down-volting for the servos as well, because they won't take that much. Uh, so these servos will run directly off of the receiver. I started um, cardboard designing. Amazing. This is the true CAD. It's, cardboard it's the true design. CAD. And you can see around the outside, I've actually started sketching a, uh, a 10 millimeter box. Went from there, and that's the end of the cardboard aided design. There is actually a little face on there as well. I've been using them on some Robot Arena 2 robots for a couple of years. This is where we got to. We cut all of the panels. So this was 4 millimeter HDP on the uh, base and lid and sides. So kind of rails down the middle are 10 millimeter HDP which is something I have kept even up to now. And these were cut with a jigsaw because my dad had one. Some of the later builds, I did not have a jigsaw and I did by hand. You can do that with HTTP, it's fine. It's so easy to work with. So we started Ooh. trying out some internal layouts, yeah. And you're thinking about your, your LiPo protection, Craig. That's not like you. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and here's where we were kind of mid 2014. Ditched the forks and went for a middle flappy thing instead. Heat bending going on here, Craig? Heat bending, yeah. So we've got heat bending going on on this four mil. This was uh, an idea of my dad's. Heated it. <laughs> up with a blowtorch, bent it and held it there. Not very noob friendly, but I'll talk about noob ways to do it in a minute. So not long after that, we took it to its first event, which was a non beetle weight event. <laughs> <laughs> the only Beatles here were this and beginning a long running feud, Limpet. Ah, Limpet. Yeah, so we uh, had a few floor fights and obviously John wiped the floor <laughs> with me because this was a very early snappy that drove terribly and had a waggly stick. And you can see the really weird construction as well, like holes drilled all the way through. So through the base, through the walls and through the lid, and then a really long bolt and then um, a nut. So it was really, really difficult to actually get inside. That construction didn't necessarily stick around for many more builds. And then soon after that, we kind of finished it. So this was the original Mr. Snappy kind of in its completed form with a three millimeter mild steel wedge on the front. And you can see from that DVD, it is chonky bigger yeah. than um, basically any beetle that had been built, I think, in the UK at the time. <laughs> These foam wheels don't have loads of grip and they're right at the back of the robot. And at the front of the robot is a really thick, wide steel wedge. The weight distribution on this thing is terrible. It could not push 
anything. So I traded the wedge out back for a plastic one again, just to make it actually do something. This was its first fight against Tweedy's first beta weight. These are stock uh, finger tech hubs, uh, the classic ones with the snap rings. And we all had snap rings falling off all weekend because oh, we didn't guys, know how to use yeah. them well. You can see Snappy here could not get under it. It could not push anything. Did it run inverted? It did. Okay, that's good. Yeah, sort of. Oh, oh, oh. Hey! And then I think Tweedy got beached or died. So you can was that your first ever Beetle proper Beetle fight? Like, like arena yeah. Beetle fight? With yeah. Tweedy? Oh, that's so nice. Yeah, and you can see how close it kind of came to the original uh, cardboard model. So that was kind of a natural end to, to that build. The whole thing's made out of HDPE, and then you've got the metal on the front. Why would you say having the metal on the front, why would you also make that out of HDPE? I think the metal holds an edge better. It's better for getting under things. The HDPE will just take the hits, it will, and it, but it will deformed because of those hits. For the next build, I decided we were going to ditch this, the uh, steel front and we we're going to move to titanium. It's at least a similar level of protection for like half the weight or something. So for anyone wondering how to get titanium cut, how, <laughs> how would you do it? <laughs> you can, or you can outsource it to a, a cutting company then. Yeah, you can outsource yeah, it to a cutting jet. company or you can cut it at home uh, with an angle grinder. And this was kind of the first startings of a, of a Mr. Snappy 2. Make it a little bit less wide, move the hinge back so it had a little bit more lift. And you've moved the wheels to the middle of the bot as well now. Behind that, I put most of the electronics just yeah. as a ballast. Try and sort of balance the weight so it's sort of evenly in front and behind. So that if I got under something with the wedge, I would still have a little bit of weight over the wheels to be able to push them forward. This is starting the build of Mr. Snappy 2, mid 2015, I think, completely done in my university bedroom on a workmate with a jigsaw and a handsaw. So this was the internal structure. There's that aluminium and steel bracket. That's really heavy. You can get aluminium mounts on eBay. Like L brackets. And, and you can get face mounts for the 22 mils from the BBB store. Plug, plug, plug. Started using some pieces like these um, pre-made servo brackets um, that were really flexy. So you can see some of the barrel nuts. Kind of like a screw that you put in that has like a thread inside it, right? Very nice for bolts. This was um, in action. This was the 2015 Peterweight Championships. It's second round fight against um, Newton, which was probably considered the scariest spinner at the time. And Headbanger. Look at um, you, you're going to lift on. And you had some foam armor, is that? Yeah, kind of a blative armor strapped to the side just because I was really scared. I thought I was going to come out in a bin bag. And this is where one of Snappy's kind of strength started to show itself. It's pretty good at not breaking. Newton's lost drive on one side. And this was like so common in Beatles, isn't it? Wheels come loose or, or a, a motor just stops and dies or a speed controller dies. Things are a lot more stable now at least. Both lost a side of drive and both ended up in the pit, hey. which was super surprising. You look very happy. I was, I was overjoyed. And and how are you doing the weapon at this point? Is How are the servos moving the lifter? With just servo horns, with a little bit of plastic on them, and they pushed up on the underside of the lifter. I think that's a good point for new builds. The gears and servos are quite delicate. Yeah. So you do want to do your best to avoid the servos themselves getting hit by stuff. So this hinged lifter is not attached at all to the servos underneath it. So this was Mr. Snappy 2 and it ran quite happily. It uh, won the Annihilator. I kept running it for quite a while. Um, there's it in comparison to the first one. It's a lot less wide, but a bit longer. And uh, just for flex when, when I took it to, to Robot Wars. At this time, mid of 2016, I started designing this four wheel drive version. And you can really see a lot of what I've done more recently on those early designs. That's not where I went with it. Nappy 2 was broken. Um, it had taken some nasty hits from Will's inertia. So I wanted to build the four wheel thing, but then a certain uh, Craig Danby came along and said, you should build a grabber. <laughs> oh my God, I love it. Wow. Yeah, this is when some really weird things started happening. <laughs> this was my first idea for a grabber. It's a real Dwayne Nibley vibe. And there's nothing to grab against. It's so flawed in so many ways, but it kind of laid the groundwork for what was coming. Started laying out my pieces. Look at that back. Talking yeah, that's it. the back oh, from, wow. the, from the original build. If your electronics look like that, replace don't, them. Yeah, don't, <laughs> don't use them. I started yeah. using the L brackets here, saves a lot of weight, uh, slightly smaller battery, and uh, we still got one of those original servos. In. I did not CAD it. It was a kind of very weird organic 
gestation. I started making a couple of cardboard bits and we ended up with this PS4 looking piece of hot garbage. <laughs> He's gone wider it's, again. It's very wide. This was all built in one day and it's a <laughs> yeah. It's an interesting looking thing which only ran for one event in this guys. The heat bending on this one. These were bent using an old soldering iron. I took the tip out as well. I heated up and held the barrel against the HDP for 10-20 seconds and then bent it with my hands. Oh. There it is with the uh, original wide boy. We were the, uh, and there's it with Tempus and the very first Catalyst. Some absolute historic bots of the Beatles scene now. So this is really when Beatles were properly kicking off. This was 2017. There's a drive test. Uh, it drives terribly. This was way after that event when it would become renamed. Literally, the uh, the original Mr. Cat's Mouse House was just wide snappy with a bowl on the front. <laughs> so then we started to get serious again with this, the four wheel design. And this was the one that I bought to Yui in oh, 2018. Yeah. So when, when we first met, this was the one that I was running. Again, here's me just laying things out. And there's some really weird flaps that I actually folded up to create the internal walls. Having four motors is really heavy. So you manage to have armor and a weapon and four wheel drivers through sort of real weight saving things like this. So why the move to four wheel drive? <laughs> Was it, was it losing to Limpet too many times or something? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, being pitted by Limpet too many times. I always had an idea of, of what Snappy needed to be and what it needed to do, and it wasn't getting there on two wheels. So you're not going to win necessarily by throwing something into the air. You're going to win by taking it off its wheels and controlling it around the arena or turning it over, getting it in a weird position where it gets stuck. So that was sort of why I kept moving the hinge point on these lifters back. So I had a, a larger kind of height on the lifter when it went up it was meant to be four-wheel drive but i blew up all the speed controllers how did you yeah. load them up i'm terrible at electronics i don't know if you knew this gareth and i uh plugged in all my vexes the wrong way around uh, always be very careful with with which way around you wire your electronic components always yeah. double check before you switch it on <laughs> we've all blown up components right guys this is part this is the nature yeah. of robot combat don't get angry if you lose some components because it's going to happen to everyone and if you've not blown something up you will at some point <laughs> get get someone to check your wiring so those the first one the second one and the fourth one the, the newest one it's a little bit bigger it has four wheel drive so it has an excuse finally got the nice green wheels to go along with the green eyes this the color theme starts emerging and the uh soldering iron with the heat gun i would really heavily suggest investing in a decent soldering iron it's got a heat gun that comes with it that i've used for bending all of my hgp since then so this was uh, the event where we first met, UE 2018. Snappy did pretty good and Mousehouse came forth. I've swapped out the wheels for Banebots. Uh, they're much grippier. A little drive test, uh, late April. And this was not long before uh, BBB3. The first BM event we've run. There's the internals of this one again. And you can see it's all a jumble of wires to try and fit everything in. Snappy is a really big machine, but a lot of it is very empty space. I think it was John Finley that once said that air is probably the best armor. So, you know, there's nothing under the skirts. There's nothing under the front wedge and that really protects the inner box. Fixings have changed again. No longer using barrel nuts. We are using just straight wood screws, M4, four mil wood screws. <laughs> Started using magnets. <laughs> If you're trying to get some downforce, you want to get some grip, you want to kind of be able to outpush things, magnets are really useful for that. So that's the build of the robot that got third at BBB3. Took a lot of damage, as you can see. Uh, Ogre Drive went through one of the wheels. Ion, I think, peeled up the wedge. And there's cracks and, and gashes all over it. But that's fine at HTP. This is what HTP is amazing for. The LED strips are cable tied on. You'll know in Bugglebots 1, I kind of got stranded on one of them in the, uh, what's that fight called? Producer Joe? Uh, what was it, the five-way? Uh, Rumblebee? Rumblebee. Yeah. yeah, still managed to win the fight, which was pretty cool. Also, in, in anticipation of finally being able to self right at some point, um, I started rounding out the back of the skirts. So yeah, that's when we did all right. Bugglebots got the fourth, trying to design another one. It was very, very similar for Bugglebots 2. Again, the chassis very similar. The gaps for the wheels were a little less. And here's a mess of wiring. This is what you end up having to cram into a very small design. When we started using the, the RoboStar servos, which do is it 270 degrees or something. Yeah, weird servo mount for this because the servo mounts I'd use for every other servo didn't fit. There's the notch. When you've got a hub sitting on here, you'll have a rod screw sitting in that hub. It's about trying to stop the wheels sliding off the end of the shaft. Yeah. But for Buckle 2, I also developed the weird forks that never kind of got used. This is when I started hand cutting the titanium with an angle grinder. Uh, someone knocked me out early. So as you know, the first person I fought was Gareth Barnaby. 
that, with gear down me. for what? Yeah, it was uh, a very interesting fight, that one. <laughs> so Snappy's like complete control bot, and I was kind of like complete chaos. <laughs> yeah, which one kind of wins in that situation? When you were showing the panic attack video at the beginning, there was a moment of panic attack like ramping over Cassius. Yeah. yeah it just reminded me of, of our fights, we did that once. As a pure driving match, you guys put on a blooming good show there. I was so proud of you guys. I think it's my favourite fight that I've been in. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. This was the layout of the robot going into uh, XSS 2020 Championships, run by us with the new 22mm motors, running them on 4S as well, mounting them through the bulkheads and these face mounts on the other side of it. Kind of refined the forks a little bit with a little bit of polycarb, pushing down, applying pressure onto the forks. And that's that's where we are now. That's it. But it did a bit well. It did, what was it, top eight? I'm really happy with how the design has changed and where it is now compared to where it started. I'm going to let it sit and move on to some other other stupid designs, other things. On a high note, I guess. So if you were to sum up your top three most valuable lessons from your first building and developing Snappy, what would those three lessons be? Uh, ask for help. Don't try and do it all yourself. Simple construction is as good, if not better, as a complex construction. Use five millimeter HDP on everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The Craig um, Dilla Craig. It's my favourite material. It's so good. All of this, you know, is apart from the wedge, doable with super basic hand tools. You know, a hacksaw, a drill, a soldering iron. That's it, right? Give it a go. Bring it to an event. Go yeah, on. build a beetle. Come on. Build Just... a beetle. Thank you for 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 build listening to me ramble for so long, guys. And I I I hope you've uh, gained something out of it. Bye forever. Goodbye forever. <laughs> Goodbye, Snappy. <laughs> Bye, Snappy. <laughs>